the first practice is that of learning to forget oneself. In this awakening, I am beginning to get the strong message that it is not about me. Rather, it is a mystery-centered cosmos. The mystery of awareness is darkness. Human beings reek of that mystery, of things which are inexplicable. To regard ourselves in any other terms is madness. So a warrior doesn't demean the mystery of humanity by trying to rationalize it. My self-centered, self-serving, self-promoting, self-consumed, self-absorbed, self-enhancing, even self-improving self is not the ticket in pursuing this journey. This orientation perhaps served me well in the past, but it must now burn in the intense and impartial fires of the awakening. One of the greatest paradoxes about omnipotence is that we need to feel it early in life and lose it early in life in order to achieve a healthy, realistic, yet exciting sense of potency later on. A great master taught that the seed must fall to the ground and die if something new is to be born and grow. The seed is the ego self. It is that seed that must die if transformation is to happen. During my first marriage, my husband and I we're not getting along. As a matter of fact, he was staying out all night and I was pregnant. I called my parents' house and I asked my brother, I said, will you come and get me please? And my mother heard him and she says, where are you going? And he said, uh, Janet wants me to come and get her. And she apparently told him to go back to bed. And then she called me and said, you can't come here. She said, your place is with your husband. You can't come here. And that was when I knew I was an adult, that I was on my own. You know, in the last year, I turned 60, became a grandfather that has allowed me to see the importance of focusing on something bigger than just my own self. And there are moments I just feel great sadness and like, my God, what kind of world are we leaving these kids? Uh, and, um, and I feel res responsible for that. It's hard to think you're the center of attention when you have a, like, when you have a sibling because it's, you're reminded of it every single day. I had to be too grown up too early, but I don't really know what it means to live life just for myself. My parents and my sister and I moved, I don't know, two or three times when I was young uh, for the purpose of taking care of older relatives who were ill. I learned right then and there it wasn't about me. I have a brother and sister, they're both, they're twins, and they're both, they actually turned three yesterday. I was, I was 14 when they were born, and I just realized it really wasn't about me, it was about them. Initially and repetitively, I am delivered to a state of dread. Dread in having to finally see what I really am, and dread in having to encounter what I am really not. I cannot discover my meaning if I try to evade the dread which comes from first experiencing my meaninglessness. Anyone who aspires to become a contemplative should think twice before she or he sets out on the road. To the extent that you eliminate self from your activities, ultimate reality comes into them but not more and no less. Begin with that and let it cost you your uttermost. In this way and no other is true peace to be found.
There is only one thing that burns in the ontological fire pit, self-will. When you are enlightened, there is one relationship that you no longer have, the relationship with yourself. Once you have given that up, all your other relationships will be love relationships. Let there be less and less of me in everything. So let's not stop here. What do we have to lose but everything? What awaits beyond the ego self? Let's go deeper. Come with me.